Hi everyone, I thought it would be worthwhile to take a moment and actually go through one of uh, Shelmerdine's exercises um, as an online video just to show you the process that you should be using as you're trying to solve these problems. So here we are in exercise number 17, this is on page 20, and what we're doing is translating both from Greek into English and then English into Greek using the imperfect indicative active. So we have a few things that we can focus in on at this point. Um, let us note, first of all, the past indicative augment that's on all of these verbs. So we know we're dealing with the past tense, and since the imperfect is the only tense we know so far, uh, we know that this past indicative augment is telling us this is imperfect. So we're going to have a lot of were blanking, was blanking as we go through this translation. Here on the right side we see the various kind of aspects that the imperfect can embody. This conative aspect, he tried to write. Again, this doesn't say whether or not it happened, it said that the effort was there. So he may or may not have actually written in the past, but yesterday he was trying to write. You, plural, were sacrificing. Uh, again, something that kept happening. Uh, if you said sacrificed on March 20th, uh, you'd use a different tense. Used to march. Again, this progressive aspect where we might imagine that this happened once or twice, uh, but not singularly. Were pursuing. This is a bit more continual. And again, tried uh, this conative aspect. For any of these translations of the Greek into English, we could use any of these aspects. We can make this conative, we can make it uh, progressive or repeated uh, in the past. So let's see what we can do. Ethuen. Well, how can we break this up? We see the past indicative augment, so we can maybe block that out. And then thuen. Well, this epsilon looks like a thematic vowel, so that's good, that's likely. Um, so maybe we can break off the personal ending in that way. And then thu, we know this as a root. Again, this will be coming from the first principal part. So, and that is what? Thuo, sacrifice. So, e, past tense, thu, first principal part. So the combination of these two is suggesting we're in the imperfect here. And then we have this imperfect ending, epsilon, with this new movable. This may or may not be there. Ethue would also be fine. So what is that? Well, if we kind of draw back our chart, we had on, s, e, which might have had a new movable, and then amen, ete, and then on again. So this is what we're working with. Third, remember this is kind of shorthand we're using. Third person singular. So let's erase that chart and kind of come back to what we have here. So third person, he, she, it. So we don't know he, she, it was sacrificing. Or we could say dot 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 used to sacrifice. Or tried to sacrifice. We don't know which it was, but one of these happened. <laughs> was sacrificing, used to sacrifice, um, tried to sacrifice. I'd say your best bet generally for these things is to, um, is to stick with the, um, this kind of simple progressive. You know, that's what I'm going to be asking for in class. A power man. So again, we can kind of go in there, use this cyan color, and then see, well, here's the uh, personal root, uh, personal ending, amen, thematic omicron, first person plural, we know that, and then pow, coming from its first principal part, pow -o. This is, of course, where we get the word pause from in English to stop. So we were stopping. We were pausing. Or we tried to pause, we tried to stop, um, we used to stop, but now we don't, whatever. So again, let's break this off. Eh, past, uon. Well, this is going to be a little bit tricky, isn't it? So again, koluo, hinder, good. Uh, so I was hindering is one way, 
But remember that we had that Omicron new. Never hurts to write these out again. Amen, ete, and then on. So we found that first person singular and third person plural had identical forms. Sorry, it looks like identical, identical forms. Which means that this could go either way. So let's erase that again and get back to what we're doing. So this will either be I was hindering or they were hindering. Out of context, there's no way to know. In reading actual Greek, this will always be very clear, or very clear 95% of the time. You won't need to worry about it. Ephares, from pharaoh to care to bury. What's that? Well, sigma, that's a pretty good giveaway that we're in second person singular. So you, singular, were carrying. And then here, epempete, again, augment, ete, second person plural, y'all, pempo, from send. Okay, so y'all were sending. Or, of course, used to send, tried to send, etc. Good, so we're good for the Greek to English. Let's try to do it the other way around. He tried to write, so clear, imperfect, this conative. Uh, we don't need to find the verb for try in Greek. We can just use the imperfect. What's the word for write? Well, that's grapho. So we're going to lose this uh, first person ending because we want to make it third, but we also, that first person ending was active present. So we need the third person. So let's go back. Let's draw that chart one more time. On, s, n, or just e. Then amen, ete, or on. So he is going to be this third singular. So it's either going to be grafe or maybe grafen. We don't really know. And then we need to make this a past tense, imperfect. So we put that past indicative augment. Now what do we need to do? Short vowel here at the end. We need to come in, erase that accent where it used to be fine. Um, and now, go ahead and draw it in right over there. Egrafen. He tried to write. He was writing. He used to write. But if this is our English into Greek, egrafen is the only option. You, plural, were sacrificing. Sacrifice again. We had it up here. Thuo. So we get our root. Thu. We'll put the past indicative augment on. And then you, plural. That's going to be all, in essence. So, ete. So, disyllabic, short, so we can go back to ethuete. Y'all were sacrificing. I used to march. Again, another aspect of the um, imperfect. So, what is our verb for marching for this chapter? Well, if you look it up, it's uh, strateo. Actually, we learned it last chapter. So, strateo, I am marching. But that's not what we want. I used to march. So let's lose the accent because I'll probably need to change. Let's add the um, past indicative augment, smooth breathing. And now we need to put the first person singular ending, a stratuon. All right. So that is short. That's a diphthong. So we can still hop a stratuon. I used to march. Good. Pursuing. What is that? That's dioko. So again, we can start with our full principal part, first principal part, accents on the penult because this is long. But now we're going to forget about that accent and, and start from scratch. So we're going to add the past indicative augment, edioko, but let's drop that personal ending too because that's not right. And we need to make it we were pursuing. So first person plural, amen. These are nice because they, they look, you know, like the uh, present active endings that we're familiar with, amen and eta. So there's no, no real learning curve there. But now we do have to consider the accent. Short, short, short on the end means we're going to fall back to the anti-penal right there, edioko, man. 
we were pursuing, we tried to pursue, etc. Let's make some space and let's do this last one. You, singular, tried to stop. So again, stop is Paolo. But then if we want to make it into imperfect, we need that past indicative augment. And now we'll drop the personal ending and make it U singular. Remember that that is epsilon followed by sigma. Ugly sigma, let me, let me do that one again. Good, epaues. This is short, so we want to go back to the anti penult. This is a diphthong, so we go from epsilon, hop this over to epaues. U singular, try to stop. Hopefully that was helpful. There will be an answer key that will be on Canvas anyway. Uh, but here's a good way to kind of break everything down. And you can see that there's really an algorithm to this. We're using epsilon at the beginning to signal that it's the past indicative. We're using these personal endings that show that it is imperfect. But then otherwise, we're just using the stem from the first principal part. So if you know your for principal parts, well, really, if you just know your dictionary entries, grafo, thuo, strateo, dioko, pauo, you should be able to do this without you know, much of a hassle. It's really just kind of combining the pieces, um, and then that's how Greek works. We'll, we'll see more of this in the future. Until then.